is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. This is a <laughs> sham. No. No. Nope. Just stop. Get real. <laughs> <laughs> Get real. All right, welcome to DBL. Good to see everybody. Hello, How's it going? hello, hello, hello. We got Olympics to talk about. America won its first gold medal at the Olympics in Beijing. All right. Yeah, yeah baby. 36-year-old Lindsay Jacob Ellis became the oldest U.S. woman to win gold in the snowboard cross. It's her fifth Olympics and a full 16 years since her last medal. But it was not a good day for alpine skier Michaela Schifrin, who fell for the second time this week. She said, quote, it really feels like a big letdown. Meantime, five female Olympic ski jumpers were disqualified for wearing suits that officials said were too baggy and could help them glide longer in the air, much like a flying squirrel, if you will. Mm -hmm. But get this, the same <laughs> outfits were reportedly cleared just a day earlier. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I, th I mean, that's just super unfair. Is there anything else to say? That's super unfair, especially because people spend so many years getting prepared for events like this. And then it's right. like, yeah, we changed our mind, you know, and then also not to mention those outfits are pretty cute. Good fitting. <laughs> <laughs> I like them. So I don't know what they're talking about. They don't yes. look baggy at all. Well, first of all, Lindsay is in a major uh, by snow wear uh, season. I'm yeah. embracing Colorado <laughs> like yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is fun. It's addictive when you get into it. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody knew the Olympics were coming, right? So it feels like um, just basic things like what people are wearing should be part of for the course weeks, months, maybe, maybe yeah. years before the Olympics actually happens. I don't know how Olympic attire goes. Um, but also the, you know, the highs and the lows, it's like, we live for those moments, but I think it was such a great reminder of the last Olympics with Simone Biles that these people are in their moment, whether it's a good moment or a bad moment, and there has to be empathy and space for both. I just want to totally just bring on Michaela Schifrin because of that. Michaela Schifrin, as I said before, missed a flag, like the second or third one, and then just knew she had not qualified and just went on the sidelines of the ice and just cried for like two minutes. And it really was this ho horrific thing to see, and a lot of people, it was reminding them of Simone Biles, because the commentators were sort of harsh, and she she just needed a minute to like get over this. So Simone has reached out today with Lindsey Vaughn and said, keep your head up high. Cause she said, I don't know how I feel. This is the worst feeling I've had in like 15 years. But I, I think that's the problem, Tori, is that most people don't know how she feels. Yeah. Right. So when we look at this, we're just like, oh, come on girl, get up, it'll be okay. It's like, you don't understand. I didn't go to any parties for right, four years. Right. I missed my brother's wedding because I was training. Mm. I did not have a child because I was training yeah. and I missed, I missed the qualification. So I don't know if any of us are really qualified to speak on that kind of sacrifice and then that kind of disappointment because right. every time we see that kind of sacrifice it's in a movie where they're playing a montage of you training hard in the dirty sweaty gym and then you're getting the, the podium they never show the movie where you miss qualifying right. and then that's just the end that's of it so it. it's it's really hard and it's, I really empathize I really do too and just so you know Sean White uh, did qualify this is his last Olympics he's qualified that man is so cute and wonderful and talented and fabulous wow. <laughs> okay right. Tori Walking I just think he's a really cool, he's, we've seen him since he grew up. He's 35 now, which is apparently old. <laughs> I'm 40. So I don't know. But it's, it's crazy that some people, like, their idols are becoming their rivals in the yes. sport. That's, like, a really awesome thing to think about in all sports as in younger sport. people come up and play with, like, people they admire their whole life. Lindsay, it has happened to me on a much lower scale. But, like, <laughs> when I go to do comedy, I can tell the people are like, an older comic is here to show us how to do it. Oh, <laughs> like, I, no, just, a season. I just want to work out a season. couple new jokes. I've been going open. I got to open mics and I do big shows. I don't care. But like, you can tell people you're are like, older guy. thanks for coming. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm this sage old man. I should be sitting on a tree stump telling you guys about you the old days. You gotta embrace the gravitas. <laughs> it's very weird. You're the you're wizard like, now. I, it, do you guys still feel like, I still feel like, like a young up and comer, I, and I'm not. <laughs> yo, I really, I mean, I, I'm I'm 40, just like Tori. Uh, <laughs> but 40. it's crazy to me. Even Lindsay, I mean, I say to Lindsay all the time, I'm like, Lindsay's the same age as my younger sister. Wow. And I mean, that could mean anything, like right. a year, but like, I consider my younger sister sister the like a totally different generational generation because she thinks so differently than I do so it's like
like Lindsay being almost a decade younger. Whoa. I mean, dang, right, girl. Easy. A little bit much, but <laughs> yeah. Girl. All right. And the thing is, I wish Lindsay was a decade younger than me. We're almost closer to two. For Look, I'm still celebrating 21. <laughs> celebrated you in, look uh, at December. So. All right, there's also some strange stuff at the Winter Games. Check out this very strange backdrop that everyone's talking about to the big air ski venue. Many wondered if, yes, this was a nuclear power plant. Is that in Springfield? That's funny you say that because some are comparing it to the nuclear power plant like from it. The Simpsons. <laughs> Turns out it's a former steel mill that shut down more than 15 years ago. Either way, it's particularly sad, isn't it? Yeah, nobody wants to see that in the backdrop of these. I want to see like flames and, and ring, like, yeah. Olympic rings and stuff. All right, meantime, uh, what about mountains? I like it is the Winter Olympics. Olympics. Yeah. And also, wouldn't you, again, they've had four years, wouldn't you paint them or something? Or do, mm. don't they cover them? Paint them pink. No, when, when the Olympics <laughs> is fair. coming to your town, they, the let's be honest, they something? cover up like right. they four spend, areas. Right, they spend like millions of you know, dollars on. when the on. Super Bowl comes. So I'm just surprised they didn't like cover that up with like make them, make them turquoise or something. I, Put I a bird on it. Also, did you know the snow is 100% man-made this year? Not really? one piece of snow is real. It's all man-made. So know that snow is becoming commodity for Winter Olympics because of our environment. Mm. You took it deep. Wow. I, know. I went yeah. there. Sorry. That sounded like meantime. a conspiracy theory YouTube video. <laughs> oh, talk, talk to me later. <laughs> All right. Meantime, athletes staying in the Olympic Village have remote controlled beds. They have a variety of settings, including reading mode and zero gravity mode. I need one of those. What is no, a zero gravity mode? You would hate yeah, that. Yeah, no, I would what like it. What is a zero gravity yeah, mode? I've actually laid flat in zero gravity chairs after a massage and I felt very nice. Stayed there for like a solid hour. <laughs> so let me tell you, it okay. feels good. That's good. And what are the Olympians eating? Well, they can get noodles delivered from the ceiling by robots. Some are posting their meals, including uh, breakfast with peas. You can get eggs. You can get matcha cookies. Matcha? Mm -hmm. Yes. Matcha cookies and a red bean bun. Compare that, though, to the athletes who tested positive for COVID. <laughs> Why are they Here's your punishment is that raw meal. chicken? What yeah. is that? The Top right scares me. Top right scares me. This is what one athlete posted while staying at a state-run quarantine hotel. She said she was served this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for five days. That looks like so what you get in, on your birthday at Shawshank. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> Like, it's like almost like it's like, hey, it's not the normal. All right, we hooked you up. It's coming a lamp shop. Yeah. It's like a weird, this is the Olympics, Lindsay. What I know. I, was trying to, one I, was, I looked at it and I was like, you know, sometimes your food, like my food is less appealing than it actually tastes, but that thing look a mess. So I'm, I, yeah, it I'm not does. even about to defend it. I, I like, I'm not going to do it. I'm like, well, what explain about the, this. Like, and how about vegetables for athletes? Like, they test a positive. That's not, they're not in jail. I know. It's very <laughs> strange. So it's like they're being punished Shame. for testing. Positive. It's odd because on the other hand, people who go on vacation and get stuck at resorts are getting like five star treatment, all inclusive, and they can't even treat the Olympians well who are yeah. representing all countries noodles. at the highest level. He's getting noodles from the ceiling. I this didn't guy's like, like that please. either. Are we just here to extract all humanity from life? Can we have some joy? It was such a weird, sterile environment. Those beds look those weird futuristic craft The beds that move beds. up and down are very expensive, Al. Those are nice beds. I know, beds but can, there's no love or swag on them. Like, put a put like a granny Afghan on the bottom of it. Like, make it make me feel <laughs> I'm it sure there's home. plenty of swag, as we know, in the Olympic <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You show up with your gold medal, Al. Coming up on DVL, we chat with a very funny Wendy McClendon Covey. She tells us what it was like to reprise her role on Reno 911, and Arnold Schwarzenegger's son recalls his dad's paternity scandal in a new interview. What he's saying now is he tries to start his own career as an actor, and it's not I'll be back. <laughs> Closed captioning provided by Let me I'm just shocked because the last time I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger's love child, aka Joseph I don't know. He was like Maybe, two. Probably. So now he's a grown man. I'm not sure of the age, but I was just thrown off by that picture. I hadn't looked at it before the show. So I'm I want to make a quick correct correction that she was in the snow for 20 minutes, as Sharon said. They showed her on TV for two minutes, which is an uh, hours for TV. But she was in the snow for a good 20 minutes. She was just broken. So let's go back to fu funny talk. Sorry. <laughs> broken. <laughs> she was I was broken. just saying that I didn't know. Lindsay, tell me again about your I just was saying, but, I was saying that I didn't realize that the kid got that old. I mean, Dude, last I time I saw him, he was like, I remember reporting on the scandal. <laughs> 
so I'm confused. Yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't actually see him or know he existed till he was 13. That's when he found out. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm just too, so you, I'm exaggerating, but yeah, yeah he was I a little thought, kid. I, thought he was yeah. I was like, oh, we'll leave him out of it. Kid. Yeah, leave You're him right. out of the conversation. By the way, someone said Just Me is, is China deliberately sabotaging athletes. I don't think they are, but that's for the people who tested positive who aren't competing. The, the people who are are getting really good food from the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, Those like, outfits did look like wingsuits almost, though. Like, like you know squirrels. what I mean? <laughs> you, know? But I w- you would think that somebody would have checked right. those. Well, the day before, they that were might okay. Have been a, it's, it's almost like on a much lower scale when an NFL player gets fined for, like, their cleats or their socks. But, mm-hmm. like, they were wearing them before the game, warming up. Like, can't a ref go up and be like, you can't have on green socks for right. the, like, well, I guess I, the, yeah, and they were qualified course. okay yesterday, so why is it today changed? Yeah, I don't I think people are going to have an investigation into this. I don't Remember the East, or the French judge, there's a, a documentary on Netflix called about, Bad Sport, and it's, I each episode is a different the, um, sport that's been, like, uh, affected point by shaving, shit, yeah. yeah, and they do the Eastern Russian judge. Mm. Remember in figure skating when, like, someone did terrible and she gave them right. a 10? My family was all about this game. Really? No one else, just me. I okay. remember. I've heard people Is there make- an echo in here? Welcome back. Well, get ready to feel old. Joseph Baena is revealing the moment he and both the world found out that Arnold Schwarzenegger was his dad. Do y'all remember this? Joseph is on the cover, that's him, on the March issue of Men's Health magazine. He told the mag that it happened when he was 13. He was in eighth grade. His mom, Mildred Patricia, pulled him out of class and told him they had to go because everyone was finding out who his father was. He said that moment transformed his life in an instant. And while he now has a very good relationship with his dad, Joseph says he's never considered taking his name. He said that Arnold is old school and doesn't believe in handouts. Joseph added that if he used his dad's contacts or asked him for favors, it wouldn't bring him any honor. Joseph has been open about wanting to become an actor and bodybuilder, just like his pop. What do you think, Al? I think that's, I mean, first of all, uh, I, I, I think about 13-year-old Al, can you imagine being pulled out of class and being like, right? your dad is the Terminator? <laughs> um, not that, like, sorry your grandfather died or something bad or you got to go to the dentist. Like, You're you right. get to go back in class and, oh, oh what was that about? Yeah, what did you say to me? The Terminator is my dad. Continue Tony on with your life. is my father. I, that's the greatest thing ever to be pulled out of class for. It's just, it was always a mystery to me how nobody picked up on that. <laughs> I mean, What's good that? for Joseph because he <laughs> he grew into that face. He grew into the face. Mm-hmm. Joseph looking good, y'all. Joseph looking real Joseph's good. Joseph's face a has man. been yes. Joseph has had this very distinctive characteristic that was face. not like, right. oh, this possibly could be. No, <laughs> his mama and his daddy were definitely his mama and his daddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's just like, you know, he's blossoming. It's so ironic that someone, because I'm also like, Arnold knew, right? We, we do, yes, right, I'm right. Sure. Yes. And then <laughs> he seems to be the biggest legacy holder, you know, aesthetically, you yeah. know, like following in his footsteps, a boy that didn't even know that that was his dad until he was 13. That's crazy. That's great. I mean, imagine that was you. What if you, what did that happen? I'm, I'm happy that they have a relationship because that was a big deal if he was going to try to pretend like he didn't have a kid. And yeah. then I don't know what the like the, the dialogue was beforehand, if he knew he had a kid or if the kid knew he had a dad or if we're just all pretending because I don't think that the wife at the time knew. I think the no. mom just left hints like, do you want to watch Look. Terminator again? <laughs> right, yeah. because they were, I guess, in the same household a lot. <laughs> anyway, you, not, I don't know what's going on. Like, okay, if, if Arnold Schwarzenegger is your husband and that kid pops up, with the mom, you not gonna, you, you wouldn't double no. take. Erica, no, you yeah, but I'm not the person that's gonna just sit around and see. just like pretend like I don't see things, right? People choose to do that, yeah. I feel like, at some point. We're gonna just address at hand, we're gonna discuss it right now. Yeah, and I'm, so. not, I'm not coming down on no. uh, Maria. She, she, I, hey, she was a victim. Yeah. Okay. And they're still amicable, which is very nice but to see. But that's still big facts on that. I mean, huge facts. Every, everybody in the house is facts. like, can you come? Can, can yeah. young What's man that looks on? just like you, can he yeah. come in here? I think there have been some times the kid is pretty crystal clear 
It's Arnold. Yeah, yeah come it's on. It's Arnold. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This has been really interesting, and I've been following this story. Comedian Heather McDonald, very funny, is having the last laugh about a recent health scare. Is that right? This mm -hmm. scared me. Heather fainted on stage during a stand-up show in Arizona last weekend. She actually posted the ordeal on Instagram, writing, when you fracture your skull after <gasps> bragging about being vaccinated. A warning. It is disturbing. I saw it. So please, if you're not comfortable, turn away. Here is the video. I want you to know, double vaxxed, booster, flu shot, did shows, meet and greets, never got COVID. Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice. So nice. Ah. Boom. Okay, so she's okay. Oof. She's poking fun at herself. She's done a podcast. Her, her eyes all bruised. She apologized to Tempe. She's someone like me that wants to not just be on the horrific end of this and mm. also just sort of make a joke about it. But um, it was very scary. And people were joking that she said, Jesus loves me the most. And then she <laughs> made that, she that, was ha that almost happened to me. First of all, it's Tempe, not Tempe. It's not a fake meet. It's okay. a city in Arizona. <laughs> I, was like, I know, it's a Tempe. You know, uh, yeah, I, was here, like a I was here in Denver before I lived here. <laughs> I remember here, this. And yeah, I, I was at the Denver Improv and I was on stage and I was like sweating and I saw people in the audience like looking at me and I was like, I think I'm about to pass out. I got off stage. They had to give me a liquid IV in between shows. I didn't know what de dehydration was and what the elevation did. Yeah, so yeah. I just thought I felt sick to my stomach. And I mean, there was like my last clear thought was, you need to get off stage before you're on YouTube. Yeah. That was my only, yeah. it's very weird when you're about to faint. You could tell her yeah. gas. She went I was black, there. I was like, everything was starting to get in black and white. I was like, you got about 30 seconds yeah. to get yeah. somewhere. So yeah, I've been there. Oh, God, I hope they took our temperature. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good recovery. I like we'll be right back, I right? Huh? <laughs> Stay with us. <laughs> I've never... Neil Young recently pulled his music from Spotify. The singer says he did it in order to protest the streaming service's choice to distribute the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Young argues it contains, quote, unfactual, misleading, and false COVID information, unquote. Other celebrities like Joni Mitchell and India Ari have joined him. And recently, a Twitter user claimed that Barbara Streisand said she too would remove her music from Spotify if it doesn't deplatform Joe Rogan immediately. That tweet has nearly 16,000 likes and thousands of retweets. Facebook users also shared the same claim. But is it true? Let's verify. We went to these sources for an answer. On February 5th, Streisand said on Twitter that, quote, someone impersonating her, unquote, released a statement about the Spotify situation. She says she applauds the musicians who have removed their music because of Joe Rogan's comments and that she will investigate the situation further and make her own decision. A representative for Streisand confirmed to verify that claims about the artist pulling her music from the streaming service aren't true. Streisand's music is still available on Spotify as of Tuesday, February 8th. So we can verify, no. Barbara Streisand did not say she would remove her music from Spotify over the controversy surrounding Joe Rogan's podcast. With your Fast Fact, I'm Ariande Till. Figure skating is about a lot more than just skating. Let's connect the dots. There are five different types of figure skating events at the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. Jumps are the name of the game. That's because skaters only have a limited number of opportunities to impress. Skaters are limited to about seven minutes combined for both the short and long programs. That means jumps and spins are the way to score points. Different jumps and spins have different requirements. The more difficult the jump or spin, the more points, which is what the skaters are after. And that is Connecting the Dots. She is one of the funniest actresses of all time, one of my heroes. Earlier, Wendy McClendon Covey sat down to tell us all about the new season of The Goldbergs. Check it out. You have said that you were too crazy for network television. I want to hear why yeah. you said that. Well, you know, I just, I got my, my first big gig was Reno 911, and that was a very weird little show. And when I would go to auditions, I would just come away feeling like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ever going to mm -hmm. get on a network show. I might just be a, a cable person for the rest of my life. So when the Goldbergs came along and the character was so bananas, I was like, ah, this <laughs> might be the one. And here we are, nine years later, Yay! and it's well, right. working out. Congratulations. <laughs> well, Wendy, my best Thanks. friend, 
One of your, <laughs> you just mentioned Reno 911. It's getting revived. What's the most exciting yes. part? Eight years of the Goldbergs, now you're returning to Reno 911. What's that like? Yeah, yeah. That was a trip because there was like, what, an 11 year gap or something between. We all thought it was done, but then Quibi came out. I, I don't know if you remember. We do. What Quibi was. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we got together, we did some episodes for that. Quibi went away while we were still filming. So we finished the season and that season that we finished, which was like Halloween of 2020, we were all sequestered in a hotel filming this show. Um, that comes out on February 25th on the wow. Roku channel. That's so, and I don't know if you've seen the, the movie that's on Paramount Plus. We did another movie, too, called The Hunt for QAnon. <laughs> it's, it's hysterical. <laughs> it's hysterical, and it's on Paramount Plus, and I think you need it. Well, it seems like it it's, really like, good. right up my alley on yes. Friday night. Yes. The Hunt for QAnon. <laughs> oh God, read on number one. I put on and just watch and just cry. All I right. know. Let's talk about the Goldbergs. Yeah. I did audition. I didn't get you the part. You did? Yeah. To be a mini you when your son was dating someone, I was going to be a mini you, She's and just, I got my hair done. No, you're just putting that oh out there. God. I didn't get it. I'll have a picture. I think I'll she show pulled you. the trigger to make sure you didn't get I it. I think so, too, Wendy. It's not. <laughs> I'm very sorry to hear this. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry. George Segal, though, <laughs> passed away. He was an amazing, amazing man last year, and this is the first season without him. What was the yeah. set like without him? Did it just feel like the energy was different? You know, it was – it it continues to be – a loss that we feel and I it was like a year ago maybe this week that was the last time oh. I saw him wow. you know and we still continue to deal with him in storylines we just filmed something where we have to go and pack up his his condo in Miami and we find out about some lover of his that we didn't know about <laughs> and you know it's We'll never stop talking about him. Yeah. But do we miss him every day? Yeah. And filming our first show back um, where we dealt with with him dying, it was all we could do to just get through it without sobbing. Yeah. And I, my personally, my face was like the size of a pumpkin because I just couldn't stop crying. Yeah. And I was like, oh, he's a good man. You know, yeah. what a what a. a honor that we even got to work with them mm -hmm. well i mean we that's what you that's how you want people to talk that's about absolutely you after you right. pass yes. so absolutely like right. that, that is truly an yeah. awesome tribute we got to get to this really quickly because i mean let's be real you have played the goldberg's matriarch for almost a decade oh, so talk to us about I what your journey has been like as beverly goldberg Why do we need to i mean it's been the most fun i've ever had to play someone this insane and Remember, she is a real person mm -hmm. yes. who is out in the world and sometimes weighs in. <laughs> um, I, I absolutely love her. I love the whole family. It's, you know, I, I have no kids in real life. So I, watching these actors grow up as my children, it just, it just reiterates over and over. I'm too weak to be a mother. That's why I never did it. Amen. I, can't agree. I don't know how people do it. Um, it takes, you know, reserves of strength that I do not have. <laughs> but it has been such an honor and such a blessing to do it. We have the best time. I know that sounds cliche, but I really do enjoy going to work, and I'm glad that I get to spend so much time with these people. Well, it shows. Yeah. We, You are such Good. a gift. So is the show. Wendy, thank you so much. <laughs> Don't forget to watch The Goldbergs on ABC. We'll be right back. Thank Bye, you. Wendy. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Promotional Consideration is brought to you by... Are you... Every day, we help you separate fact from fiction in a world full of misinformation. And we ask you to send us your questions. Some of the most frequent questions we get are from people forwarding us potential scam emails. So we're going to show you five ways to make sure they're legit. Our sources are the Federal Trade Commission, U.S. Courts, Amazon, and the Social Security Administration. We're going to focus on phishing scams since they make up the bulk of emails we get. Email scammers have gotten really good at mimicking legit companies, like this one that's supposedly from Amazon. How do we know it's a scam? First, 
check the from field and you'll notice the sender uses a Google Groups email address. Amazon says its genuine emails are from an at Amazon.com account. The same advice holds for any company sending you an email according to the FTC. Next, there's the urgent subject line. This email claims your account is locked and you need to take immediate action. Scammers often try to make you act before you have time to think. Third, it's addressed to a generic user, not a personal greeting. Fourth, the email uses poor grammar, saying your account are on hold. And finally, if you hover over the link to update your payment information, you'll see the URL that pops up doesn't go to Amazon. You can spot the same red flags in this email that Verify Viewer resent us. It claims you owe money to a company you've never heard of and warns of a warrant for your arrest. Again, it's from an unexpected sender, has an urgent tone, and isn't addressed to anyone personally. This time, they cite a section of federal law that doesn't exist, threaten to block your social security number, which can't be done, and ask you to email a Gmail account that doesn't even match the name of the law firm they used. U.S. Courts says federal warrants are only served in person by law enforcement. Then there's the same poor grammar, starting with, we are hereby to inform you that you are going to be legally prosecuted. Finally, let's look at an email sent to us from a verified viewer that's supposedly from the Social Security Administration. The from field is a .gov email. The tone is informational. It's addressed to Social Security recipients in Minnesota. The email uses correct spelling and grammar, and the link goes to an official government site. The context also meets the limited reasons of why SSA would email you to raise awareness about programs and services. It does not ask for money or anything in return. So this email is legit. None of these are foolproof methods of spotting fake emails, but these five steps can help. If you're ever unsure, don't click on any link in the email. Instead, go directly to the website of the company that's supposedly emailing you and check your account. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Budget airline Frontier is making a bid to buy rival Spirit. The merger would create the fifth largest U.S. carrier based on seat capacity and seventh largest on revenue. A lot is still unknown about the merger, like what happens to Frontier's popular discount club or Spirit's in-flight Wi-Fi service, or what the new company will even be called. But executives say at least one thing is clear. Affordable fares will still be a top priority, and they're hoping to significantly expand their offerings. Until the deal is finalized, the two companies will remain independent with their own fares, flights, and policies. If you're trying to lose weight, this tip could help. That's today's healthcare update sponsored by Go Health. So a new study shows people who get seven to eight hours of sleep consume fewer calories. That's why it's important to have healthy sleep habits. If you're Amen. actually struggling to get good <laughs> sleep, please talk to your doctor. And if you're looking for a health insurance plan, Go Health makes it so easy. Call 1-800-650-2534 or visit GoHealth.com to find a plan that's right for you. Guys, another day in which Lindsay got some sleep. Amen. Oh, Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. DBL's new. We'll see you tomorrow. Good luck for tonight. <laughs>